Hi guys, this is Nadia from Dolly Crafts and today I want to show you how to create this wire pendant. I quite often make kits and PDF tutorials for the videos I put up on YouTube. So I'll pop a link in the description and you can take a gander and see if there's anything you fancy. Also, don't forget to subscribe because I upload new stuff all the time. Right, let's get started. So to begin with, I'm going to cut my square wires. There's four of them. We're going to be using these for the frame. Now round will also work, obviously. I just find that square has got better integrity um, and it holds the round wires much better when you're weaving onto it. So what I've done here is I have marked them at the midway point and we are now going to bind them together with a piece of half round wire. Now again, obviously, if you don't have half round, you can also use round wire that works just as well to bind it together. It's just that the half round profile um, has a nice, well, as I said, flat profile that kind of wraps around a square wire nicely and holds it in place. So all I'm doing here is I create a little loop to attach it, um, but actually it's much easier if you just um, start wrapping without creating the loop. So um, whatever works for you. So what I'm doing here is I am folding it around the square wires about five or six times. doesn't really matter how many times. I usually just have an uneven number because I like to have, when I create a bend, I like to have a little wire sitting in the middle. Just personal preference. Um, so it's entirely up to you. So we continue wrapping until it is completely central. And when trimming off the wires, which is what we're going to be doing next, um, it's important or not really important, but much better to trim off the wires both on the same side. And that side will be sitting against the stone. This just prevents any loose ends um, from potentially snagging onto clothing or whatever else you're going to be coming in contact with. And also, obviously, it's less chances of scratching your skin. So what I'm doing here is just keep adjusting until you're happy with the way it looks. And that's it so far. So next we're going to create a V shape. And this is sort of the initial um, section where we are going to be placing the stone. And so I'm taking here what I've got here is a flat pair of flat nose pliers. Um, these hold all the wires in place nicely. I'm adjusting the um, half round wire to sit nice and uh, neat at the bottom. So next I'm going to choose a stone. So I've got several stones. Some of them um, are available in the kits as well. So you can take your pick. There's lapis, uh, black banded agate and then beautiful unikite. So I've decided for this one to go with the black agate um, and at this point you can decide whether you want to point down or point up the design actually works for both sides uh, really just going to have to adjust the weaves um, I decided to go with point down so I'm marking roughly at the halfway mark obviously you can measure this out to be more accurate but I just go sort of thumb sack for this sort of thing and um, it works so whatever works for you as well so next step again um, i'm going to create a little loop again and as i said earlier i actually found it easier not to do that um, i just tried it out to see if it works better but i just find it less fiddly if you just start off you see it just keeps falling off so i found it uh, less fiddly if you just attach the wire from the get-go so i'm trying to attach it, as you can see here and i'm wrapping it around the square wires and um, there's nothing to hold on to really so I find it actually better to have a little end to hold on to as well so but yeah you learn through trial and error really so I'm wrapping it around and then I am squidging it technical term here squidging it against the frame and trimming off the ends that's it um, and again always inside um, the inside of the frame So once I've done that, I take a hard surface, sort of surface I've got is quite soft and bendy. So I'm taking a rubber block here. Um, so if you have a tabletop or something, you can use that as well. It just helps to keep everything flush while you're bending the wire around. You can do that if you get a bit of practice 
holding it in your hands i just like to have a hard surface personally but everybody's different um, and does things differently so here again i'm using my flat uh, nose pliers and i'm using it to hold on to all four wires at the same time and shaping the square wires around the stone and i'm trying to keep it as as tightly wrapped around the stone as possible to give it a nice snug fit and the sort of harder surface helps me with that because i've got a little bit of, of sort of resistance to work with so i'm pushing it in and that is what it looks like so far and that is a nice tight fit and that's what it looks like so next we're going to bind the bail wire together so for that i'm using another a piece of half round wire again if you don't have half round you can use 0.6 which is your 22 gauge um or your 20 gauge which is 0 0.8 mil as well in round wire it works just as well it will just have a bit more of a projection um and is not quite as secure as your half round so what i'm doing here is i've just attached a little bit of that half round wire to the base and then i'm going to wrap the remaining length of half round around the bail wires about three or four wraps or so just to secure all um all eight of them together so next i'm separating out the two top wires i bend them upwards and then i will have three wires left on each side which i'm going to bend outwards towards the side and next i'm going to continue wrapping the half round wire around the two um, square wires at the top um, and those are going to be our bail wires so that's that's um, all the wires we need and the remainder we're going to be using to create the design later on so just continue wrapping it around you can kind of coil it around you can see nicely if you have your square and half round wire that it creates a nice beautiful flat surface so just continue until you've got the whole length so next we're going to leave the bale aside for now we're going to seat the stone so we take the stone and replace it into the bezel that we've just created and i'm going to give myself a bit of a helping hand with a t-pin needle and that helps me just to separate out the wires a little bit to give me a bit of access because they're quite hard to reach sometimes especially if you've got clunky wires i mean clunky pliers rather so this is quite hand, um, helpful so i'm placing my stone in there what we're going to do uh, on all four corners around each of the half round wire attachments we're going to be folding the square wire ever so slightly over the stone so you can see here where i've lifted the wire the square wire with a pin it's much easier to pull over so I'm just going to do this until um, all of the stones are set so I've done two and we're going to do the rest just now as well and the same applies for the front so again I'm taking my t-pin and I'm separating out the square wires um, so that I have better access so pull it through and then take your fine tip pliers these are actually clock clock making plies i think i'm not really sure where i got them but i love them because they're very tough and um, very strong and have a very fine tip i need to actually get another pair if i can ever find a link for them again i'm going to share it all right so now we've done the same we're going to do all four you can see now i've done all four at the back and then all four at the top so next we're going to go back to the bell and we're going to shape it into a loop and we're going to fold it back on itself so open up the two wires at the back and we're going to kind of go around the front and just give it a wrap each wire in the opposing direction so i'm just going to take a pair of pliers for that um, and that will help me to pull it nice and tight so just wrap it around um because we've used 0.8 wire it's a little bit softer and flimsier than it would be if we had used 
our one mil, which is 18 gauge. So the, the 0.8 is 20 gauge um, and the one mil is 18. So we wrapped it around and then what we're going to do next is tuck the ends away. So we're going to trim off any excess wire. So I'm cutting off the half round so we don't need that anymore as well. And I'm trimming off from the square wire we just wrapped around as the bit. I'm going to trim off the ends, leaving just a few centimeters or millimeters rather, just enough so that we can kind of bend this wire inwards towards the inside of the bell. So again, out of the way so that no snagging can occur when you're wearing it. It's also a good idea, um, you know, in case you are going to wear it on bare skin, you don't want to get scratched. So that's what it looks like so far. So we've got our wires now. We're going to be working with wires on the right. And I'm going to take two of those square wires, feed it through, or feed them rather, through the bail in a clockwise direction. So I'm going to pull these through. And while, you, while you're working with square wire, try not to twist them because it's, well, while you can untwist them, um, it's a bit of a problem to untwist them because um, it's it's not too easy to do. So it's much easier to try and keep them straight if we're going to be working with them at a later point. So next we're going to straighten them out. And what we're going to do next is create two by five. So a really simple weave. And I'm going to start with two wraps around both and then I'm going to create five wraps around the bottom wire so that's one two three four and five now when you are at the beginning of a wrap like that it's always a little bit fiddly to try and get the weave to sit nice and tight so I always tend to come in with a pair of pliers to push the weave together it gets easier as you the further out you you come from the actual weave so in the beginning just try and push the weaves together with a pair of pliers so again the weave repeats itself so it's five times around the base wire and then twice around both wires like so and then once again start again until you've got enough so i've created my sets obviously you need to adjust the amount of weaves you have to do and obviously the wire length if you have a bigger stone um so bear that in mind when you're making this um, and we're going to shape this weave in an anti-clockwise motion and sort of drape it over the bale like that and that's what it looks like so far we're going to do the same with the other two wires on the other side so we're going to separate out the back wire and do weaves with the top two so i've created another set of weaves exactly the same as the first and we are going to be folding this weave forward and over the stone. So fold it and shape it. And kind of drape it again over the stone following the sort of first line. But we're going to then veer out towards the left rather than the right. Like so. Just going to shape it and you can always adjust it later. This is the initial sort of look, and that's what it looks like. Here we go. So, next, we're going to take the innermost of these square wires and I'm going to go in an anti clockwise direction and I'm going to swirl it. And you can use a pair of pliers if you want to, to actually adjust the shape and size of the swirls. So just take your time and enjoy creating these. Actually a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. Um, so once we've done the first swirl, we are then going to create an open swirl at the bottom. And for that, I'm using a pair of round nose pliers. I like to use short and stubby ones for that. Because I tend to press on the wire end um, quite hard as I round it and this will taper the tip to a narrow end which looks a lot more elegant than you you sort of flat wires if you just cut them and twirl them hope that makes sense <laughs> right so 
we're going to shape and we're going to lay this against a stone so just take your time with that um, and just decide where you'd like it to sit um, and arrange it whichever way you want and that's what it looks like so far so next we're going to use the outermost wire and we're going to repeat this process we're going to pull it through towards the middle and what we're going to do now is create a clockwise swirl so I'm shaping it and you need to decide how big you want the swirl to be so I needed to trim off a little bit off the end of the wire and then I'm going to repeat the same process as before so I'm squeezing the tip before I, I, I swirl anything um, and then once I've done that I kind of curl the ends in um, on itself so that I can fit it into the space and just squeeze as you twist because that will thin out the tip and that's what it looks like so next we're going to move on to the other side so i'm going to take the square wire remaining on the right hand side and i'm going to shape it and fold it over the two by five weave that we have created initially and i'm going to lay it beside the two by five weave like so and that's what it looks like next we're going to take a short piece what was that a short piece of a 0 0.328 gauge wire and what we're going to do is give it a couple of wraps around the two innermost wires to bind them together and then we're going to feed this um 28 gauge wire to both of the ends we're going to feed it through the frame and attach it at the back somewhere this is just so that and the design isn't too flimsy and there are actual um, anchor points throughout the whole design which makes it a lot more sturdy and less likely to be bent out of shape so we're just going to attach the two innermost wires pull it tight and then we're going to go out the frame so again use my pair of pliers to bunch up the weave and there's no particular sort of pattern it's basically just a couple of wraps around each wire to keep them in place just the inner two bear in mind not the outer so now that we have done this I'm going to feed this wire through to the back of the frame both of them in fact both ends and we're going to find a place to anchor it so that can be anywhere preferably always try and attach it somewhere out of um sort of out of um where you're not going to have it touching the skin or clothing anything like that always bear that in mind you want to make it as wearer friendly as possible so i'm attaching it and we're going to do the same with the second wire so next I'm going to create a swirl with the innermost square wire so feed it through and then I'm going to bring in a new piece of um, 0 0.328 gauge wire and I'm going to be attaching this to the innermost two wires so once again wrap it around both wires like so and we're going to be creating another few sets of two by fives so i'm going to wrap the half front not the half front sorry the round wire five times around the um lower wire and i'm going to wrap around twice around both wires obviously just push this together to keep it neat and tidy and then we're going to continue until we've got our five sets so i've got five sets now and i'm going to take the innermost wire and create another swirl so what i'm going to use this wire for is to go towards the back of the frame so i'm feeding this under the two by five that we have just created 
and if you can you can feed it through the frame but there just isn't enough space in this case um, I find for my design um, and I'm feeding it to the back and I'm going to be attaching it to the frame later on so next I'm going to move on to the middle square wire and I'm going to once again shape it like I did with the other swirl so I'm thinning out the end by squeezing the tip with my round nose pliers as I twist and this gives you a nice thin tip and I'm going to then shape it into a swirl so just kind of fold it in on itself until you're satisfied with the way it looks and where it sits and I always use my pliers to kind of adjust it. If you can't get the right shape using your round nose pliers, I, um, you can always use your chain nose pliers to adjust the size of the swirl and the actual shape. If you sort of push on the tips and manipulate the swirl until you're happy with it. That's what it looks like. So next we're going to shape the last outmost square wire. Sorry, I'm out of shot here, a couple of seconds. Um, so I'm going to be back in the picture. There we go. So we're going to shape the outermost square wire. And I'm just going to roll it back in on itself. And we're going to go um, in an anti-clockwise motion. And then we're going to fit it over the stone and, and again you know this design is very organic what I'm showing you here is just sort of my idea of design you can do your own um, so nothing is set in stone so lastly we're going to attach that wire that we have created earlier I'm going to fold it around and I'm going to feed it through the frame and attach it to the back so for that I'm ever so slightly lifting the wire and I'm feeding it through and then kind of fold it over the frame itself. Next, the very last wire, square wire on the top. We're kind of shaping it. So these are basically just decorations rather than structural uh, add-ons. Add so you can decide wherever you'd like it to sit and I am finding a space here to feed that wire through to the back. Um, so wherever you can find a space, just bear in mind we need to add a stone to the middle there later so leave enough gap for that to happen. So you kind of pull this wire through and you then shape it until you're happy. So it's coming back to the back of the frame, we're going to be attaching it anywhere you can find a nice area to attach it securely. Next we're going to add the beads on the side. So here I'm using some leftover 0.3 but actually it would be much more secure if you also added an extra piece of wire through there because your 28 gauge is very fine so if it gets stuck on something or so it will easily break. So I recommend you add an extra wire there before attaching it. And that's what it looks like so far. So lastly, we're going to be adding um, our prong setting. And um, I'm going to pop a link to this tutorial into the description. You can use some 0 0.6 round or square wire for this. The square always fits better. I find it's tighter. So we're going to be adding it to the pendant. And just underneath the um, where the bail is, the little gap there. So you kind of press it in. We're going to be attaching this to the frame. Then we're going to dip it into Live of Sulfur, if you so wish. Give it a good polish. And then um, that's the whole pendant done. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. And I would absolutely love it if you would join me on my social media. I always upload little shorts for my tutorials and other fun little progress videos. Um, and also, if you'd like to join our artist group on Facebook, I'm going to pop a link below in the description. And last but not least, don't forget you can buy the kits, PDF tutorials and other fun things on in my shop. So once again, I'm going to pop a link in the description below. And that's it for me. Thanks for watching and see you soon.